Greetings, Commanders. This is Commander Atlas Rand. Uh, I wanted to show you, and I'm starting this video about 10 hours, no, not, not 10, probably 8 hours after getting to this location. Uh, and I'll actually record what the beginning would look like later. But I wanted to start off by showing you what an semi-AFK, meaning, uh, you know, there's a person by the keyboard the whole time, of course, but not looking at the screen, build can do by itself at a uh, resource extraction site. <clears throat> so I didn't even go to a low, I went to a regular ex resource extraction site. Now you can see after about eight hours, my shields are at 76, but my hull is at 28 which means there probably were multiple times when my shields went to zero and then uh, the hull started getting damaged and there's not a whole lot of hull left. In fact, one of the things I need to do before I fly out of here uh, is actually start repping the hull a little bit, get a repper on them, and then get the collectors working overtime to pick up. You see all these white things? Uh, these are all escape pods. An interesting thing about escape pods is they don't expire. I guess that makes sense, so it's good that they did that. But the reason they don't expire, let me see, can I dump something I don't need? Don't need those. Uh, and I could probably dump some limpets while I'm at it. I'm gonna abandon like 10 of them. I'll probably get rid of all of them eventually. Um, they don't expire, which means that some of these escape pods have been sitting here for many hours. Most other things that come out of a exploded spaceship do expire. But, um, okay, well, I don't, I got a fine for jettisoning illegal content. Jesus. All right. <clears throat> anyway. There's a lot of escape pots here. There's more than I'll be able to carry with me. That's for sure. Okay, we're getting the getting the hull fixed up. Shields recovering nicely. And I will include the build for this ship because I know that's going to be the first question. What's the build? Well, you can kind of see it right here. It's all burst lasers except for one beam. Okay, and we're back. So this is the ship that I'm using for the semi-AFK while I'm watching Netflix stuff. Uh, let me uh, show you what all it's got. So we're got, we've got everything is long range and the reason I went with long range uh, is because lasers have a, a pretty short, well certainly burst lasers, um, pretty short full power range. It's actually 500 meters. Almost nothing is going to get within 500 meters, which means all the other uh, engineering things that you can put on there, any of the other ones that you can do that make the lasers more powerful are kind of don't make any difference past certainly one kilometer because the, the power starts to go down after 500 meters. So what I want is I want to make sure that I have the same power regardless of the range and doing two into long range, uh, that gets the laser out to about four kilometers. Let me actually use this ship and I'll show you in the configure in here. We'll show you what the stats are in here. Okay. So range just over four kilometers. Most ships that are going to attack you are going to be less than four kilometers, but more than one kilometer away from you. So it's really that area between 1,500 and three and a half thousand is where most ships that attack you, where most of the pirates are going to be. So you want to use the engineering mods that maximize damage at that distance, meaning past 1,500 meters. And even though doing long range doesn't actually increase the damage of the laser doing a long range means that you have the same damage going all the way out there now 
I've got a combination of inertial impact, which adds jitter, which is horrible. That means you're going to miss about half the time to maybe even two thirds of the time your laser is going to miss. However, when the shields are down, having this uh, inertial impact on there is going to make finishing killing your ships way faster. And you'll see that uh, once you do your own build that when the lasers, when the initial shields are taken down by your lasers, the actual destruction of the hull happens even faster. And that's because of these initial impacts. So I have a size three inertial pack, ugh, size three inertial impact. I have a size three phasing sequence. Um, so this one is um, bleeding through the shields to start attacking the ship, even while the shields are up. And I have a size three beam laser with thermal event. And this, this really is to keep the temperature of my ship cool so that as I run out of capacitor, which I am absolutely in the way that I'm playing running out of capacitor on a regular basis, the ship would start heating up. Well, because I have this thermal vent and it's long range and it's actually up to 4,800 meters, which means it's going to be the first laser that hits somebody as they're further out or the last laser, depending on how you look at it. Point is, in any range, it's going to be putting out the exact same amount of damage, but more importantly than damage, it's going to be putting out the same amount of uh, thermal vent effect, so it's going to be cooling off my ship. And that is vital to not damaging your own ship due to uh, overheating, because, you know, if you're not paying attention to what's going on, you could get into that situation. Now the rest of the lasers are gonna be burst lasers. So this one is once again, inertial impact. So we have two inertial impacts, one on top, one on the bottom. Burst laser is on top, the beam laser is on the bottom. I could have two beam lasers, one on top and one on the bottom because the beam lasers with the uh, thermal vent both cool the ship off and do more damage to the shields than the burst laser. So that's an option and I may end up going that route on this ship. The problem is that the, well, actually they they take up the same amount of power. I was gonna say the, the beam laser takes up more power, but it doesn't look like it. The power draw is 165 and it's 166. How about distributor draw? So burst laser, 0.56, beam laser, oh yeah. This is why I can't have two beam lasers. <laughs> the distributor draw is insanely more so this is about one seventh of the draw on the burst laser that the beam laser draws so the beam laser is the main reason probably my capacitor goes down so i actually may i don't know no i can't screw with it it has to be full power to cool the ship off i i just i can't do anything about that burst laser that's pretty much the same thing i think as this one yeah these two are identical in their setup. Then for the size twos, we have a phasing sequence burst, which again starts damaging the hull uh, before um, the shields are down. We have an inertial impact and we have a thermal shock. And the thermal shock um, heats up the other ship without cooling off your ship. And the reason I have a thermal shock in here is because this is useful for ships that uh, use shield boosters. So the thermal shock will prevent them from using a thermal booster because it's, uh, it's going to be heating up their ship and the way that NPCs work is if their heat is over 90%, they will not use anything that creates more heat. And I've, had, I've used uh, large thermal shock lasers in the past to basically bring a, an, an anaconda to a complete barely moving, not quite standstill, but barely moving and not doing anything about its shields because it's running at 100% heat uh, because I'm dumping a bunch of heat into it. And so it can't use a shield booster, it can't use a speed booster, it can't do anything that'll increase the heat of the ship. That's the way the NPCs play. Now humans don't do it that way, they don't care about heat as much but NPCs will do nothing if, your sh if their ship is already hot. 
Uh, then for the size ones, I've got another thermal shock. And then I got, well, I got three thermal shocks total apparently. So I didn't even realize I had that. So I have three thermal shocks, uh, one size two and two size ones. So there you go. And that's, um, that's going to drain heat while, and these are a long range. These are really long range too. These are going all the way out to five kilometers, but these are more for a ship that's trying to run away, I think. These will help to finish them off because they go all the way up to five kilometers. Um, but it is pure thermal damage, which means it's gonna not going to do a whole lot against their hull. So that's the basic setup I've got. Uh, utility mounts. I have two point defenses, one on top, one on the bottom. You need that to kill the uh, limpets trying to steal your stuff. Everything else is shield boosters. And I've got it set up, and some people may disagree with the way I've done this, but uh, my shield boosters are all resistance. So I have thermal resistance and I have resistance augmented. And that's gonna be the case for every single one of these. And the reason for that, um, oops, yeah, so they're all resistance. The reason for that is because I want the fastest recharge time on the shields. So if I had some uh what's the other type the whatever it is the type that basically increases the um the size of the shields rather than the resistance of the shields that would make the shields last longer but also make the shields recharge a lot slower and the way the npcs work uh in pirates in these uh uh in these uh I'm blanking out in the, in the asteroid fields in the, what do you call those things? God, I'm totally blanking out. They are called, uh, cancel that. They are, I can't believe I'm blanking this out. They're not called, resource extraction sites. There you go. The way that this works in the resource extraction sites is they kind of come in waves. You'll get one, maybe two, but sometimes you'll get three. I had one yesterday while I was watching the ship, so I was getting pretty nervous, that was uh, three ships. Two out of the three ships were anacondas. And uh, boy, that was a difficult thing to take down. Um, and they took my shields down to 14%. Now, if I didn't just have resistance in there, if I actually had uh, shield boosters that made my shields bigger, they probably would have gone down to 16, probably would have gone down to like 35, 40%. However, they probably would have never come back up from about 40 because remember you only recharge shields when you're not getting shot. And going from 40, even with just the rechargers, going right now from the 18 to 100% is about 20 minutes. If I would have swapped some of these resistance ones out for larger uh, size, that 20 minutes could have easily become 40 minutes to go from 18 or let's say some low percentage to 100%. That would never happen because the, the longest duration between any two attacks when you're sitting in an asteroid belt is about five minutes. So that's about as long as you have to recharge your shields. So right now, the way that it's set up with almost uh, just resistance here, the shields take, um, they can recharge about three to 4% between any attack and they can recharge about 10% when there's a large gap between attacks. And the large gap usually happens when you've killed multiple ships all at once. It seems like, and again, this is just anecdotal. It's not the way the game is set up like I don't know if this is true every single time but the way it seems is that uh, if you kill two or three ships all at once you've got about a five minute lull without anybody attacking you and it's during that five minutes that you're really going to recharge your shields the most because as soon as somebody starts attacking you the recharging stops so anyway that's the reason I'm using all resistance here Central core, everything should be maxed out. I've got reactive surface simply because I had it. That could potentially uh, be downgraded to military. Um, 
you know, it's uh, six and one half dozen of the other. The, the whole boost is, I think, is exactly the same on military and reactive. The only difference is going to be right here. It's going to be in the uh, resistance bonuses that you get to the hull. And you kind of hope you don't have to really go through the hull. I always do the whole heavy duty deep plating just to maximize it. Because uh, if you get down to a hull when you're in a shield build, uh, you're in trouble. Power plant, overcharged. You want to max that out. I don't have the extra uh, the uh, experimental effects on any of these, I don't think. Yeah, I need to go through and actually put experimentals on all of them. Um, don't really need it on power plant. Could you use it? You can see I'm just a tiny bit over. But when I'm stationary, you want to turn off your thrusters while you're stationary anyway. And I'll tell you why. Because if you don't, it's going to keep draining fuel. And I, I've had this experience more than one time where my ship has drained away all the fuel because I forgot to shut down thrusters. It takes about six hours for a size seven thruster and a size six capacity 64 fuel tank to empty out. Think about it. Six hours of stationary will completely drain your fuel. So if you shut down your thrusters, it doesn't completely stop your fuel draining but it is greatly slowed down so you get more like 24 hours of fuel instead of six hours of fuel uh frame shift this is the old one i haven't bought a new one because generally this ship doesn't go very far but i probably will at some point swap this out for an sco life support honestly this just needs a d I, it had an a so that's what's in there uh okay power distributors so right now i have a charge enhanced super conduit and it, in order to have shields have the maximum capacity, which prevents your ship from getting blown up. As you saw, I was down to very little hull and that was with these settings right now. Uh, you really do have to have four pips in shields if you wanna make sure that your ship isn't going to get blown up at some point. Just, and usually what'll happen is you'll have an attack of three large ships that'll drop your shields to nothing. And then you'll have ships attacking you every few minutes, one at a time, which prevents your shields from actually fully recovering. So there are, there are certainly, uh, I think, um, uh, some people that run it with just three pips of shields, but I, I kind of prefer to have four pips and then be fairly certain, although not 100%, that the ship is not going to blow up. With three pips, I've come uh, looked at the screen after getting breakfast or something that shows that uh, the ship has been destroyed. So I like to run four pips to shields. However, with four pips, there's only two pips to weapons and a charge enhanced bar distributor is not quite doing it. So I'm going to be running some numbers, doing some math. In fact, let me uh, bring this uh, screen over here. Blow this up. Uh, so we've got the, um, actually, you know what? There's a better way to do this. And that is to uh, have it be an overlay. And this thing is called, uh, uh, let's see. So where is it here? I think um, no. there it is okay let me turn it on and then let me blow this up full screen full screen ish so this should show you um let me do this there we go and then i can expand this a little bit there we go. So you can see that I, I can play around with it. So well, one thing I do is I, I turn off the thrusters when I park, which means my uh, power levels are perfectly fine. Don't need to do anything more with that. But if you look at the power distributor, so the way I've got it set up right now to weapons, it's got 55 megawatt and it can provide uh, 9.1, so 9.2 megajoules 
two weapons per second. So what if we were to put in a go to charge enhance, do a weapons enhanced that would put in 9.1 so okay it's not going to make any difference so it's it would put in exactly the same thing the only difference is going to be it would last longer because it's going to have 98 megawatt and instead of uh, 55 megawatt so it wouldn't run out of weapons for longer but the actual rate of recharge this is 9.2 and if we go here to weapons focus it is 9.1 it's actually a slower recharge slightly slower recharge for weapons but way slower recharge for engines and systems so shields now i don't think this would actually make a whole lot of negative difference for the shields because uh I don't think the shields draw that much. Let's see how much the shields do draw. Uh, 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 shields, where is my, right here, prismatic. So it is a size eight prismatic. So it's really the most powerful shield you can get in the game. And I have it on reinforced high cap to make it as big as possible. Um, does it have the regen rates distributor draw? Yeah, this is tiny. So under one, megawatt distributor draw so i think that will be um power draw is nine but we're fine on power with the uh the thrusters turned off but this is distributor draw is 0.84 megawatt um now i wish it would tell me in megajoules instead of megawatts i don't know why they show megawatts in here but if we go back to the distributor the system recharge is 3.5 megajoules per second or 33 megawatts. So it should be plenty sufficient for it to recharge even if I ran weapons focus. So the only thing weapons focus would do is it would give me about 40% more capacity before some of the weapons start turning off. Um, that may be useful I, I may end up trying this. The, the thing is, this is a really expensive part. <laughs> this is um, this is going to be eight, really eight million. Okay, eight million with a fifteen percent credit or fifteen percent discount. So buying in Liru space. Um, hmm. And then engineering it to this. Now that's with super capacitors. What if I do? uh instead of super capacitors i do or super conduits i do cluster capacitors i think yeah so that lowers the recharge but gives me 105 so almost double of the uh what is currently in there for the capacity but it slows down the recharge which i don't want so how about nothing 8.7 yeah and what's the recharge here with nothing uh charge enhanced 8.8 .8. yeah so the, the charge enhanced is always going to have a slightly higher recharge that's all at level five engineering um super conduits yeah 55 versus 93 It'd be a worthwhile experiment. I mean, I'll, I'm not going to get rid of this existing power distributor, but I may swap it out for a brand new one and then engineer it to be weapons focused and then see, um, see if that performs better in the AFK build. Uh, optional internals, uh, you already saw the prismatic. Well, actually, let me shrink this back down. Shrink that, put that. Actually, put that over here. Make that a little bigger. See both. Um, so in here, we have prismatic shield, A to A. Reinforced shields, high cap right now. 
I have Collector Limpets 7B. Now, there's a reason for this, and that is so that the ship doesn't have to move in order to pick up escape pods. Most of your kills are going to happen between one and a half and three and a half meters uh, from the ship. You can see that this is the longest range of any limpet that we have is 2.3 meters or 2.3 kilometers. So 2,380 meters. So this draws a fairly large sphere around the ship in which the limpets can pick up. Most people run the universal limpet controller here in, in 7. The thing is, as you guys may or may not know, the 7A universal limpet controller, which is the best quality universal at uh, seven, size 7, uh, the limpets that it spits out have the exact same stats as the 5A of the corresponding limpet. So if you're using a 7A limpet controller, the distance that your limpets can go is about 1.54 kilometers, which is the same distance that you get from a size 5A collector limpet. So the, the universal always uh, is doing a uh, one size smaller quality of limpets. So while that would be a single controller that has everything in it, uh, unfortunately, it's a controller that has everything but at size 5 equivalent quality. Uh, or not quality, but size 5 equivalent stats. So you there, you can't get this range using the Universal Limpet Controller. You would have about 800 meters less if you were going to be running that controller instead of the Collector B. And incidentally, the 7A gives you also a shorter range. I think that one gives you 2,000 meters. So your, your longest range is going to be with the, the bees here. And frankly, your limpets aren't going to live that long anyway because you're going to get shot at, at the longest every five minutes, but generally uh, more frequently than that. So 420 seconds is plenty. Then I have a six, uh, size 6 cargo for the limpets, and this will eventually be zero limpets and all, um, all uh, recovered uh, escape pods. Fighter hanger. So you could do it with or without a fighter. Uh, you can replace the fighter with an additional Guardian Shield Reforcement unit. Make yourself a little more tanky, but uh, have a little bit less firepower. The fighter does not provide a huge amount of firepower. However, the fighter has great maneuverability, and it can actually go shoot the, um, uh, the enemy pirate ship when your uh, weapons are already struggling to hit it. Um, while I have engineered all the lasers to be uh, at least four kilometers out, the fighter can go out six, seven, I think seven is the limit, maybe even ten, but at least six. It can definitely go over six kilometers out. And sometimes that's the difference between a pirate running away and uh, warping out and the pirate getting killed and you getting a bounty. So there's a pro there for the fighter. The other thing the fighter does is it, it can engage enemy ships very quickly and that's another benefit so you start attacking sooner the quality of the fighter will greatly depend on what the quality of the npc pilot is so if you have a beginner level pilot for your npc then the fighter is probably not going to be the best option you'll actually do better just putting in additional shields um guardian shields is the only way to add more shields from inside the ship using the optional internals uh, there is there are no human versions of this so you have to unlock guardian shield reinforcement and so i've got two of them in here i've got some hull reinforcement this was the only thing keeping my ship alive in the beginning of the video i've got a repair limpet you do not need a repair limpet you can just put another hull reinforcement here and your hull will last a little longer or put another shield reinforcement to get a little more shields I just, I think at some point I put this on and I haven't taken it out. Um, but what I do with it, obviously, is if I 
can buy the computer and I see that the uh, there's hull missing, then I'll pop out a repair limpet, start getting it repairing, and then uh, walk away and get my food or whatever. So it, it's one of those things where um, you don't need it, but if you have it, you can make use of it. And that may mean that you can stay out a little longer without needing to jump back. But Generally, if I was building this from scratch, I probably wouldn't put this in there. Then I didn't have anything in the two slots, so I just put another shield reinforcement units. So this just adds another 100 shields. But with the shield stats that I have, let me switch to the shield stats. So I have 71% resistance, 49%, and 76% resistance. So this extra 100 shield reinforcement is equivalent to 170. 150, 175. So it's still worth something. And if you got rid of the repair limpet and put a shield reinforcement there, that would be, I think, around 150. Oh, sorry. It's, uh, it's not 100. It's 90, I guess. Is it 90? Shield reinforcement? No, it is 105. Okay. So if I had a size 3 shield, that would be, I think, around 140. Um, because size 5 is 215, size 4 I think is like 180-ish, so size 3 would be around 140, and then size 2 is around 100. And then I have a docking computer, because this is a big ship, and it's a pain in the butt to drive it. It's very slow, so I'd rather have it dock itself. So, there you go. There's the build explained for the fighter. I have the Condor. Um, it's a, just a good all-around fighter. Uh, it, it has um, multi-cannons in it. And unlike normal multi-cannons that you would run, these never run out of ammo. So having a fighter that can do damage to the hull, I think is better than a fighter that can do damage to the shields for one simple reason, which is when an enemy NPC pirate ship is in low health, they will usually try and escape and warp out and prevent you from getting the bounty. Having multi-cannons in there that do damage to the hull ensures that your fighter will chase them down, shoot them, and kill them, and you will get the bounty. So that's why I usually like to have a, uh, a hull attacking. And it doesn't have to be the Condor, but it, but it generally is going to be a fighter that targets the hull rather than the shields. Because while they have shields, they have no problem getting close to your ship. So that's the build. You can see how slow it is. It is super slow. You can see how slowly it turns. Super slow. Okay. And at this point, we are ready to head out. Let me just get a couple of things. First of all, you need a crew. So there's my one guy. He's 8% uh, past dangerous. So he's getting close to elite, which is great. But... Check out how much money he's stolen, or I mean, I paid him since I got the uh, the NPC crew. Two billion three hundred thirty-one thousand one hundred ten, or three hundred thirty-one million one hundred ten thousand four hundred ninety. So that's two billion that he's cost me essentially for being a mediocre to okay NPC pilot. So I'm. I have not bothered getting any of these crew on my other accounts. This is the only account that's got one, and I kind of want to get them to elite first. The other thing you will need is limpets. So uh, pick up. I'm gonna pick up probably like. Let's see. Let's get probably 63 limpets because I'm gonna get also need to have something worth stealing. The limpets are not worth stealing. So let's get, uh, oop, keep hitting the wrong button here. Let's get a, um, I don't want to risk that. Actually, we can get the uh, Occupy Escape Pods. What's the other one? Damage Escape Pods, I think. See if I have any of those. Nope. Occupied damage. There we go. These I don't care about as much, so I'm just going to grab one of these. And that provides the bait. So, three things to get, then we're going to launch. 
And uh, you can fly to low intensity conflict, or sorry, low resource extraction site. I always get those two mixed up. Um, that's probably the most likely place you're going to want to go. Uh, the way the ship is set up with things are a little beefier, I actually kind of like to go to a regular extraction site rather than a low. There's more risk for this ship getting blown up by just bad luck with pirates. But you make more money and that means you get more merits that way. And honestly, I don't really mind the ship getting killed if that happens. I mean, I hope it doesn't, but it's about 20 million rebuy, I think. Maybe 20, 22 million, something like that. Um, so it's not super cheap, but I'm going to make more than 20 million in bounties. Although you do lose all the bounties if your ship gets blown up, so there's that. But it, it's not hard to make 20 million to pay for a new ship. And if it doesn't blow up, then the extra bounties that you get in a regular one and the regular, the higher merits as a result of that are somewhat justified. Now, I'm not going to encourage anybody else to do this. Um, definitely start in low. If this is your first semi-AFK ship, definitely start in low. And if, if it lasts without getting killed and if it doesn't go into the hull especially, then feel free to move to a regular extraction site. I do not recommend going to a high. There's just too much opportunity there for ships with shield boosters to kill you and less police to help you. Because a big part of what helps in these low and regular is the amount of police presence. So I'm going to start slowing down. Uh, apparently I have a mission there somewhere that I didn't even know about. All right. Must be one of those auto accepting missions. I like to fly a little bit high, a little bit above the actual site and then dip down as we get closer. So start dipping down and then you can either just let it decelerate right into the asteroid belt. You should be going slow enough to not take any damage or if you want to just save five seconds, you can do what I'm going to do and actually press the button as, it, as soon as it gets into the blue zone. Right there. All right, first thing I do is I go horizontal to the plane. I start going forward a little bit and up just a tad. I want to be above the, I'm almost above it right now. Okay, good. So now I can actually stop moving sideways and start going straight up, which is what I'm doing right now. And I want to go right to the edge of where it says mass lock. Not because I'm going to be trying to escape or anything, but because I want more room between myself and the belt because I use lasers to kill other ships. Okay, there we go. So now we just... Oh, look at that. Already getting attacked. So I need to pop all these lasers. I need to pop this guy. And I need to shift all my pips into weapons and shields. So let's get him out. There you go, Peyton. You can go help. I like to point at the resource extraction uh, and then I'm going to um, turn off the thrusters to save on energy. It's going to go from 3.85 per hour down to two something or well, maybe three. All right, because the lasers are going. That's also using. So Peyton's fighting. Let's see what this looks like. So there's my ship shooting and there's the police shooting the same person as well. Okay, it looks like my 
my pilot is not doing great. So he's about to pop. Nope, he's still alive, surprisingly. I'm going to pull him in though. Recall and get get his ship fixed. Or her ship fixed. I guess Peyton could be either or. And my ship is still shooting. You can see all those white things. So I might as well send out some collector drones. Open up. Open up the cargo scoop. And you can see her shields are still at 95. Now they're going back up to 96. So even with three ships attacking right now in a regular one, not a low intensity, it's still pretty good. But look at how many police there are. All the green guys are police. That's really what did most of the fighting. So I got 100 merits for that last kill. Wasn't really paying attention to how much I get for the other kills. But, um, you know, 100 merits, 100 merits. So now let me send the fighter back out. So deploy. And one thing I didn't do is let me make sure I put the fighter on defense. That way he's not going to start any fights. He's purely going to be defending this ship. So he's on defense. The pips are the way I want them to. The cargo scoop is open. The thrusters are turned off. Uh, here's the last thing you want to do. Make sure you have fire at will turned on. Otherwise, if this is set to forward fire or target only, since you're not manually targeting, they're not going to shoot. So they have to be fire at will. And then I've got something uh, worth stealing in there. So that's the basic setup. Then you just kind of wait here like this with the fighter. Shields are back up to full charge, which is good. But you can see my, my weapons are two pips. They will completely exhaust the capacitor, which is why I want to do a test to see if putting in a military capacitor is going to work better in there. Or not, not a military, what am I saying? Putting a, a weapons type distributor. <laughs> is going to work better uh, because it'll have more buffer before they, they're still going to run out but more buffer before they run out uh, i wish they'd be shooting me right now instead of that little ship by itself there uh oh yeah collectors so i got two collectors but i guess all the ships that have been shot so far are just outside the range but you can see this is why i bring a two or a, a 7B collector is because a lot of the ships are going to be I mean generally they're not going to be any closer than one and a half and they're usually within about three and a half kilometers and of course three and a half is outside of two and a half and two and a half is the range of the collectors right now so before you leave when you're ready to leave you may want to fly around and make sure that you're cargo hold is going to be full of the escape pods if um but you also may be full anyway just from the cargo pods that are in the area that that you're in okay we got somebody else scanning so there should be another kill and then we'll probably wrap up after this kill oh no no here we go now they're shooting And now my ship is shooting back. The yellow beams are the um, the ones that do damage to the hull. So you can see with that 3% jitter, they're missing a lot. They're probably missing like 80% of the time. But when they hit, they hit. <laughs> this ship always looked like the head of Optimus Prime to me. Uh, from the uh, Autobots. Does anybody else see that? And if you see it, you'll never be able to unsee it again. And that's, that's actually the name of the ship that I have. And the fighter just zoomed back to uh, being in his usual parked position 
next to the ship. All right, guys, with that, I will wrap it up. I guess that got me 16 merits, whoop de doo But still, again, it's 16 merits while I'm doing something else, and it looks like it's attacking another ship right now. So, what are you shooting there? Oh, one more setting. So if you stay to watch this far, you want to make sure you do, and that is... Okay, this was 50,000 bounty, so how many merits? Probably some very small amount of merits. Um, here's the other setting you need to change. You need to go into ship. Oops. You need to go into ship. And then you need to go into report crimes on. So normally I tell people always have this off. Anytime you're fighting Thargoids, anytime you're with other people, always have that off. Because if you don't, you may be trying to hit one ship and then you accidentally hit somebody else. And the next thing you know, um, well, actually, if you hit them, <laughs> it's, it's going to be whether they have this setting on. But they can hit you accidentally. And if you have this on, they will end up in prison next time they're dead. So make sure you always have it off when you're playing with other people. When you're doing this, though, you want report crimes on because that calls the police. So uh, having report crimes against me turned on ensures that you have help doing this. All right. So a uh, video I was thinking would be very short, turned out to be a little longer. But hey, um, if you watch the whole thing, then you got all the bits. People that just zoom through it will only get about a third of the advice because... I, I really kind of spread what I am telling people to do across the whole video. We'll catch you in the next one.